Hello everybody, Trevor here. In the Thomas and Friends universe, there are two important worlds, the Railway series and the TV series. My favorite of which is the TV series because, in my opinion, it is the way of the future. But that doesn't mean that the Railway series isn't important because that came first, and it was originally written by the Reverend W. Audrey. What I love about these two things is that they each have their similarities and differences. For example, in the Railway series, Ivo Hugh was the number seven engine on the Scarloway Railway, while Fearless Freddy replaces him in the show. Another interesting example is that Napper Station was actually quite smaller than its TV series counterpart. Many of the original characters like Thomas were adapted to the TV series. Season 4 was the last season to feature those from the original Audrey stories, until season 20 came along with the introduction of the miniature locomotives and their own controller. Unfortunately, there are many other characters that were never televised. So that's why I'm making a top 10 Thomas characters that should have been televised a long time ago. For this list, I'm only going to include characters that appear in either the Railway series or annuals because those were written by Wilbur and his son Christopher. So I'm not going to include any magazine only or online exclusives because most of them are not canon to the actual show. And trust me, I was going to include Angus the Fire Engine from the magazines but because he's so obscure and not well known, it's very unlikely that this will happen. Also, I'm going to exclude every single merchandise exclusive character such as Rickety the Charleston Truck by Learning Curve. Even though he was the most successful non-televised character in terms of merchandising, but I don't think this will happen either. And besides, any Charleston Truck in the show can be Rickety. Now with that out of the way, let's begin. Number 10 goes to Algy the Bus. Algie is a bus who works with Birdie and often teases him, but one day he broke down and Birdie came to his rescue. I find this character very interesting because he's like one of the only few sentient vehicles to, to appear in the magazines by Christopher Audrey. And the funniest thing about Algie was that he had two liveries. One is yellow with a red stripe, but in the remake of Birdie Saves the Day in the early 90s, he was repainted blue and given a different shape. Personally, if I want this character televised, then I think they should pick the latter design because blue goes well with red and that his later shape makes him look more unique and original instead of being a similar shape to Birdie. And besides, yellow and red would be much too similar to the colors of McDonald's. Number 9. Some of the Peel Godred Engines In the Railway series, there was only one electric line and that would be the Peel Godred branch line where they deal with heavy aluminum traffic. It even has its own electric engines, but they're not named and were only mentioned in the books. However, they are similar to classes A6 and A7, and there was one scene in the book called More Bad Days for Thomas and Friends, but as a minor character. I think some of them should be televised because they're very interesting, and I would have liked to see the electric line in the CGI era. But unfortunately, that's not going to happen because of the 2D reboot. And if the Peel Godric Electric line does get televised, then I think these engines should be TV exclusives, like they did with Glenn the Coffee Pot engine, who was inspired by the Coffee Pot engines from the island of Sodor, its people, history, and railways. Number 8. Some of the National Railway Museum engines. In the early 1990s, there was a railway series book called Thomas and the Great Railway Show, not to be confused with the one from The Great Race. This book is about Thomas being invited to the National Railway Museum in York. And when he got there, he made new friends including Green Arrow and Iron Duke. I would like some of these characters in the show, particularly Green Arrow, Iron Duke, and Mallard, because I'm always a big fan of famous locomotives, whether they be in the UK or in the US. But in this case, these are UK locomotives, and I would like to see them interact with others like Spencer, Duck, Duchess, and even the Flying Scotsman, who's also part of the collection. However, there are some I don't think need to be televised, particularly the Duchess of Hamilton, Box Hill, and the faceless version of Stevenson's Rocket. Why? Because for one thing, we already have Duchess of Lowborough, from Thomas and the Royal Engine, as well as Stephen from King of the Railway, and Stepney. 
And besides, Box Hill looks too similar to Stepney. Personally, if this book and its follow-up, Thomas Comes Home, were adapted into the show, then it would be a very special treat. Number seven is a tie of four. Ada, Jane, Mabel, and Cora. There are a lot of female coaches and guards bands on the Scarloya Railway, and those that are named were never televised, including Gertrude, Millicent, and Beatrice. But the ones I think deserve to be in the show are Ada, Jane, Mabel, and of course, Cora. Why? Because for one thing, Ada, Jane, and Mabel were released in wooden railway form. Second of all, they, along with Cora, appeared in some illustrations from the railway series. What makes these three coaches unique is that they are open coaches and were designed for summertime. I wonder if they don't like the rain. Also, they don't have to televise all of the blue coaches and brake bands, just these particular ones. Number six, the big city engine, AKA the foreign engine. Fun fact, this particular character was going to appear in the show by reusing Henry's model but with an added new face and smoke deflectors, but was sadly dropped. I personally would like the big city engine in Thomas and Friends because the story, Gordon Goes Foreign, was narrated by Mr. Perkins in a segment called Storytime with Mr. Perkins, and it was later referenced in Thomas and the Royal Engine. He was also released in Wooden Railway and Taken Play forms. Lastly, I wish the big city engine had an actual name. I would name him Patriot, but that's already taken by EE93. So instead, I think I should name him either Algernon or Reginald. If you guys have any ideas for his name, let me know in the comments section below. Number 5 is a tie between Wilbur and 16. Wilbur and 16 were two austerity tank engines from the new railway series by Christopher Audrey. They only appeared in Wilbur the Forest Engine. Wilbur was blue, and 16 was reddish-brown. In one chapter, Wilbur told the story about 16, who thought he knew better but only got himself into an accident by tumbling cab over wheels down the bank. But he got a second chance eventually after he was sent to the shed in disgrace. These two characters were both released in Ertl form, but Wilbur alone was made into Wooden Railway. I wish these two characters were televised because not only that they both made an appearance in only one book, but also the fact that Wilbur was named after the Reverend W. Audrey himself, though he was originally called G.B. Keeling back in 1953. And because of that, I think they deserve more recognition than what they've got in the franchise. Number four is Neil. Neil was an old Scotch tank engine from the Sodor and Mainland Railway. He was considered ugly, but kind, according to Scarloe. In fact, he was the one who helped take a young cabless Scarloe to the Scarloe Railway. I want this character televised because not only he's good friends with Scarloe, but also he was released in Ertl, Win Railway, and Trading Card form. And according to the Island of Sodor, its people, history, and railways, he, along with his two unnamed brothers, were scrapped in the early 1900s, which made me sad. Do you remember Glenn the Coffee Pot Engine from the Andrew Brenner era? In that show, he was the only surviving coffee pot unlike his brothers from the original books. And I'm glad he got a second chance by the Earl of Sodor. So why not do the same with Neil and maybe he could be part of the Earl's upcoming railway museum, which I doubt will happen now. Number three is a tie between D199 and D7101. Also known as Spam Cannon Bear, these two blue diesels were first introduced in Enterprising Engines and were brought to Sodor on trial. Spamcan was rude, while Bear on the other hand was kind. One day, Spamcan and Bear broke down due to their ejectors, while Henry was still sick from those dirty old tenders that were filled with boiler sludge. But together, he and Bear helped pull the train together to the station on time, while Spamcan sulked. After that incident, Diesel 199 was sent packing while D7101 stayed behind, recolored dark green, and was renamed Bear due to the growling noises he makes. I find these two diesels interesting, not only that they were painted British Rail blue, 
but they both have bright yellow faces. And what's most interesting about Diesel 199 is that he is one of those railway series characters that's been released in a lot of merchandise, including Ertl, Wooden Railway, and Take Along. Bear, on the other hand, was only released for Ertl and Hornby. And furthermore, Enterprising Engines is one of the most beloved books in the Railway series, and that Bear was one of the main characters from that particular series, and that's why I want these two engines to be televised. Number two is a tie between Jock and Frank. In the CGI series, there were only three miniature engines that were adapted to television, Mike, Bert, and Rex. When I first saw these three in the show, I was very excited and very happy that they are being introduced into the TV series along with their controller. And ever since then, I really wanted to see the other r Steel Railway engines in CGI. But the two I wanted to see most during that time were Jock and Frank. The reason why I wanted these two televised is because they both made physical appearances in Jock the New Engine. In fact, they were both released in Ertl form, while Frank was released in Wooden Railway form. Another interesting fact was that Jock was originally made by the Reverend W. Audrey in the book, The Island of Sodor, Its People, History, and Railways, but his physical appearance didn't occur until a few years later. Honestly, I was hoping that they would also be introduced in CGI, but I'm afraid that's not going to happen anymore because of, you know. But still, hopefully when the first two seasons of the reboot are over, then maybe they can go back to the show's original roots and put these two engines into the show. Fingers crossed. Before I get to my number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. The elderly Brake fan. He looks too similar to the spiteful Brake fan from the TV series, but with an elderly face. The other Arsdale Railway engines. They were only mentioned in few of the books. We know what they're based on and what color they are, but I didn't include them because, as I just said, they were only mentioned in few of the books, like The Island of Sodor, Its People, History, and Railways. Albert, Helena, and Victoria. I was going to include them on the list, but because the story takes place in the 2000s, I think we should mainly focus on the stories that take place in the mid-20th century, such as the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Also, they were already replaced by Ada, Jane, Mabel, and Cora. And the number one Thomas characters I'd like to see in the TV series are most of the Coldyfell Mountain Engines. Out of all the non-televised characters from the Railway series, these are some of my most favorite ones because not only that they are very interesting, but they only made physical appearances in one book due to the safety precautions and limited traffic on a mountain railway. Also, there were at least four Caldy Fell Railway characters that were released in toy form. Caldy, Catherine, Godred, and Lord Harry. That is, if you discount the truck since he's only partially released with Catherine in wooden railway form. Caldy was merchandised the most because he's more well known than his comrades. And I think these four characters should have been televised a long time ago, along with the truck. In addition, the Mountain Engines book contains one of the most interesting but saddest and darkest moments in railway series history, and that would be the story of Godred, who never kept a good lookout. He thought he knew better because of his automatic brakes, but due to his carelessness, he tumbled down the mountain and was badly damaged. But the saddest part of all was that the manager didn't have enough money to mend him, so they had to take his parts away to mend the other engines. So Godred shrunk more and more until nothing was left to him. Yeah, death rarely happens in the Railway series. Personally, if I wanted Godred to be televised, then I think they should never scrap him at all, and instead give him a second chance like 16 from Wilbur the Forest Engine. Another interesting fact about Godred is that he was painted red in the magazines instead of his traditional Caldy Fell Railway purple. And I think that's a great idea because if I want these characters to be televised, then I think they should give most of them a completely different coat of paint like they did to the Scarloe Railway engines. But definitely keep Caldy purple for sure because like I said, he's the most well-known mountain engine in the franchise. Why do I say most of these engines? 
Well, I'll explain that in full detail in the next top 10 where I talk about non-televised characters I don't want in the show. Now tell me in the comment section on which Thomas characters you would like to see adapted into the show. Do you agree with my list, or do you have your own personal preference? And it doesn't have to be the Railway Series characters, it can be those from the annuals, magazines, and other Thomas books, such as The Monster Under the Shed. And as I stated earlier, join me in next time where I'll be discussing my top 10 characters I don't want televised. This is Trevor Davis, signing off.